Okay, so Form 5's final term has the theme of responsibility. So we decided in Humanities to focus on history and to look at crime and punishment throughout some different historical periods to see how crimes were punished in the past, whether we agree with the way that they were, and whether any of those things are still happening today. Um, if things are still happening or if those times in history affected our present day, we call it their legacy. So we're going to start by looking at the, the legacy of the Romans. The aims of this lesson will be for you to understand some of the terms used in crime and punishment. Terms means words or phrases. For you to find out about what the Romans believed about crime and punishment. And the success criteria, so how you'll know you've done that. You're going to match some of the terms used in the British justice system with their meanings. So we'll be focusing on some vocabulary work. You're going to explain some of those terms and you're going to tell us some ways in which the Roman justice system has left a legacy today and recall some key facts about the types of punishments that the Romans would use. So, I want you to start off by having a think about the question, what is a crime? And now I have some questions for you. You can either think about them yourself or go and have a chat with a member of your family or a friend to get some ideas before we get started on the history. So some questions for you. What crimes can you think of? What sort of punishment might happen to a person who commits those crimes? How is it decided whether a person is guilty of the crime or not? How do we know if they did it or not? Why do you think people commit crimes? And would those reasons have been the same for people hundreds of years ago? Take some time, so pause the video and have a think or have a chat about those questions first. Okay, hopefully you've had a chat about those or think about those questions. Now let's go back in time, around 2,000 years back in time, to find out what would have happened to someone who committed a crime when the Romans were in charge. So to start off with, I want you to think about what is a crime? And either think about these questions yourself, or you can pause the video and go and have a quick chat with a member of your family to get their ideas as well. So some questions for you to think about. What crimes can you think of? Maybe you want to make a quick list. What sort of punishment might happen to a person who commits that crime? How is it decided whether a person is guilty of the crime or not? Guilty meaning whether they've done it or not. Why do you think people commit crimes? Would those reasons have been the same for people hundreds of years ago? So pause the video and have a think about those questions or go and have a chat about those questions because it's really important to think about your um, ideas and views of crime. Okay, so now let's go back in time, around 2,000 years back in time, and find out what happened if someone committed a crime when the Romans were in charge. So at the top of this page, we've got a bit of a timeline and you can see that the Romans were around for quite a bit of time. And this is the period we're going to look at here from 450 BC to AD 410. So the Roman laws were called the 12 tables. They were written around 450 BC these were basic rights for all Roman people and decided what they should and should not do. I wonder if this reminds you of anything. The laws written in the Twelve Tables dealt with all manner of crimes, from serious crimes such as murder and less serious crimes such as stealing. The laws also dealt with cleanliness. Homeowners had to clean the street outside their home. 
Can you imagine that? Does that still happen? And children learnt the laws off by heart at school. Now that's something we don't do. Maybe we should. So in the Roman times, people who were accused of committing a crime were taken to court to be judged guilty or not guilty. There were no police to catch a criminal. People had to catch the criminals themselves. In Britain, the job of finding a criminal was down to the legionaries. Think about the information you've just heard. Is there any information there that still happens today? And any information that's a bit shocking because it doesn't happen today? So, as we look at the punishments, let's first look at the glossary the bottom of the screen, so we understand the key words. So the word severe means very strict or harsh. Deter means to try and stop something happening. Rebel means to resist or not follow the orders of the person in charge. And exile means to be sent away from the country you live in, not be allowed to come back. Okay, so let's learn a little bit about punishment at this time. So punishments in the Roman times were severe. Their main purpose was to deter people from committing crimes and of to put them off. The worst possible punishment was kept for anyone who tried to rebel against the emperor. So that's the very worst punishment would be if you were rebelling against the person in charge. The punishment you received depended on what money and possessions you had. If you were a slave, you had no rights at all. The punishment for most slaves was death by many different awful means or to be forced to become a gladiator. However, if you were a noble and had plenty of money, you were often saved from death and told to go into exile instead. So what, what's worse, being forced to death or to become a gladiator or to go into exile. Do you think it's fair that the punishment changed depending on how wealthy a person was? So let's have a look at the crimes and punishments in detail. So this is what would happen for some of these crimes. So small scale theft which was considered a minor crime if you look at the table on the right. The punishment for theft was flogging, which is like whipping someone, beating or repaying the cost of the stolen goods. For burglary, which is a minor crime, amputation of limbs, literally chopping off hands, feet, arms, whatever. Murder, arson, libel, and you can see at the bottom, arson means deliberately setting fire to property. Libel means damaging someone's reputation with false information, with lies. The punishment for those crimes, and I can, we know that they are severe crimes or serious crimes, the punishment was execution in lots of different ways, means death, or exile if you're a noble. Rebellion, a serious crime or not worshipping the emperor. Crucifixion means being nailed to a cross, or being thrown to the lions, or being forced to become a gladiator. Wow. And did you know, singing a song about someone that wasn't true was punishable by death? And if you set, fi set a fire near any houses, you would be bound, tied up, and set fire to yourself. Now, some of the things you've seen there might seem fair punishments, and some of them I'm sure you'll be shocked by. Have a think about it. Here's a fun way of looking at what would happen to you if you did any of these things in the Roman times. So spend some time having a look at this and following the flowchart. I'll give you one example. 
So we look at the start. Am I a slave? No, I'm not a slave. Are you an ordinary citizen? Yes, I am. That's the blue circle. Did you steal money from someone? Mm, yes, I'll go with that one. Punishment, I will be whipped. Oh my goodness. So have a look at this, have a play with it and see what punishments you would have. So now we've learned a bit about the crimes and the punishments and um, how these things were managed in the Roman times. Let's look at the legacy. That means what's lasted um, from that time. In Roman times, the victim of the crime had to bring evidence to court to show what had happened. If they had enough money, they could pay for a lawyer to help them. If it was a serious crime, a jury would decide whether that person was guilty or not. If it was a minor crime, a judge would decide. In present-day Britain, the use of a court and trial still happens today. However, everyone has the right to a fair trial. This means if a person can't afford a lawyer, the government will pay for one or help to pay the cost. You're going to be learning about the Portuguese system in PSHE lessons this term, so you'll also be able to see whether there's any legacy of the Romans in the Portuguese system and compare it to the British system. Okay, so now on to the vocabulary and I have a task for you to do. Now you have two choices about how to do this. If you have a printer, you can print the, the sheet and cut out the words and the meanings. If you don't have a printer, you can just write them down. You don't have to draw the pictures if you don't want to. So you've got the sheet attached to this assignment and the first thing you need to do is cut out each item. Now if you're not printing and cutting out, you don't need to do this step. Then you need to match the description with the picture. So if you have a look at the sheet, you'll see there are words like judge, jury, court, arson and so on. And then there are some definition boxes as well, like um, the act of killing someone deliberately, not by accident. That's the definition. So you need to find the word that matches that definition, match them together. Then, like you can see on this screen, I want you to put them into a table. If you're using the sheets, you could print it and stick them on, or you can draw this into your book neatly using a ruler. So you would have three columns, people, crime, punishment. And once you've matched the vocabulary terms to the definition, you put both of those into the correct column, people, crime, punishment. You may need to use a dictionary to find out the meaning of some of the words that you're not familiar with. And then when you've finished and you've checked, use the answer sheet, uh, which is attached to the assignment, to mark your working green pen and reflect whether you got them all right and whether you can remember those words as well. So to finish off the lesson, let's think about the changing punishments. Normally we would have a whole class discussion about this, but this is something you can think, of, think about or talk about with friends or family. So which of the punishments we've learned about today still happen in the present day? Why do you think it's different now? Why do you think some of those punishments don't happen anymore? And do you think the Romans had a fair system to punish people? Think about the difference between whether you were a slave or a noble. So that's the end of the lesson about the Roman legacy with crime and punishment. Um, let's revise what we wanted to do today. So we wanted for you to understand some of the terms, that's the vocabulary, used in crime and punishment. That's words like judge, jury, uh, or guilty. And for you to find out about what the Romans believed about crime and punishment. Hopefully you think you've done those things. And these are the things we wanted to do. We wanted to match some of the vocabulary with their meanings and for you to know and be able to explain those terms. For you to say, 
uh, some of the ways the Roman justice system has left a legacy today, that's things that still happen, and for you to know some of the key facts about the types of punishments that the Romans would use. So if you think you can't remember some of those things, try to remember some facts to impress other people, like the one about setting fire or singing a song. If you want to, you can spend some more time researching the Roman Empire and the Roman legacy. Um, there's some great horrible histories videos out there that you could have a watch of if you're particularly interested in this period of time. In the next lesson, we'll move on to the Anglo-Saxon period and their crime and punishment systems. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to upload your work to Seesaw when you've finished and marked it and um, leave any comments on your thoughts of the Romans and have a chat as a class about it. See you next time.